Okay, hello everyone. This is Mike Cleveland and this is my wife Jody. Hi. And we are coming to you from the state of Washington and we have a new friend uh, with us and her name is Kathy and Kathy, welcome. It's good to have you here today with us. Thank you. I'm enjoying being with you. Well, we are enjoying talking with you. Um, you have completed, is it weight loss boot camp and follow-up or just yes, both both okay good all right and I know you have a lot to share and we're looking forward to hearing and we have agreed ahead of time to start with Romans 6 uh, verse 15 and kind of just see where the Lord would lead us as you uh, as you begin to share so if you have your Bible there uh, we will begin to look at this together and so um, I'm using the NIV, but whatever you have is fine. And it says, what then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? And the answer is by no means. Right. Um, and so we are taught here, aren't we, Kathy, that grace is not an excuse or a license to sin. Um, as you look at this verse here, um, what thoughts do you have as you contemplate what it's saying to us? Well, I don't have the uh, liberty to go on sinning by no means. Right. Yeah. Even though I'm under grace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think the one of the reasons is in verse 16, it says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. And so um, in verse 17, you want to read 17, Jody? But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey him from your heart, the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. So Kathy, as we as we look at this together, it says that you used to be slaves to sin. Uh, I I definitely was. Um, I, I felt real keenly the truth of this passage. I, I'm sure you do as well. But you know, for me, that looked like at least 40 pounds of of gluttonous weight on my body. It looked like laziness. It looked like dishonesty and. Um, I, all kinds of acts of the flesh and things like that. As you look at this verse, what do you agree with this? Are you relating to what it's saying here as well? I was a slave to sin. Uh, whenever food called, I went and ate all the time and plenty of it. Hmm. Right. And isn't that, you know, typically in the church, we don't think of overeating as sin. It's kind of like gossip right? It's everybody just, it's sort of, you know, and yet in God's eyes, what you're saying is that you were a slave so that when food called, uh, you had to obey and simply go and eat. And that's the way I was as well. I, I think of food as my master. It really had mastered me. And, and I'm sure that you felt that way as well, right? Sure. Yes. And so um, when you when you think about being mastered by food, what are some of the ways in which um, you would say that it had mastered you? It was always in my mind, always calling me. I never skipped a meal and I ate between meals a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was, it controlled me. Um, there was nothing I could do to make it not control me. Right. <laughs> That's exactly the description. Uh, and I'm sure others that would be listening and watching were, would be saying, yep, that's exactly what I experienced as well. Uh, so you've described that. Well, when you say that nothing um, would would set you free from this were there things that you had tried previously oh yes i have tried many things all my life um all kinds of programs some you want me to name names oh sure <laughs> <laughs> uh 
uh, there was a um, 12 step program for weight loss. There was Weight Watchers. There was um, Gwen Shamlin's program. And I'm sorry to hear that she died, but it was, she used Bible verses that were helpful. Many of them you have used. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, I tried even diabetic diets or you keep the, the worst thing for me was keeping track of your food, having that. It was like an external thing that was very difficult for me to do, to write things down, to figure things out. God wasn't in control. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Right? right. When you're, when you're micromanaging and you're trying to document every little a bite of food, it does get, it, first of all, it gets tedious. And secondly, you feel like you're a slave to documentation, right? Cause you've got to write everything down. And then it's very, I found it when, cause I did, I went through a similar um, pattern like you described. And I found it very difficult to be um, realistic about a portion sizes, you know what I mean? Like, so I would have to measure it, weigh it. And oh, it got to be so all consuming. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Oh. Totally. yeah. So as it as you look at this verse, though, it says uh, that you used to be slaves of sin. So Paul's right. referring here in the past tense. Um, but something happened to these Romans, and right here in this verse, it says you've you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching mm. that has now claimed your allegiance. In context here, Kathy, he's referring to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that pattern of teaching that talks about Jesus coming to give his life as a sin offering for us, of suffering in our place, of dying under the penalty of our sin to release us from, us, from it and set us free. Right. And so this is how I found freedom, is looking at the cross and seeing, wait a minute, Jesus took my sin. He, he bore my punishment in his own body. Therefore, it's no longer mine. Right. And I'm free from it. Uh, and that just absolutely changed my heart. And so yep. now I come and ask you, what is your experience with this? You, you tried many different things and programs like I did, like all of us have. Right. But now, okay, that was in the past. You used to be. But now, just explain in your own words, what has happened? Well, first of all, Christ made it. He made me realize what I was doing was wrong. And he was right there for me. And he did pay that penalty and I, he did it for me personally and for you personally. Um, it's just how real he is and then what he did. It meant a lot to me. Yeah. That's where it says you obey from your heart. Right. Yeah. Right. This is what we're talking about here is a heart change. Um, it's one thing to write down all the food I'm eating and to, you know, follow a diet that has me restricted in what I can eat and what I can't eat. Meanwhile, I'm just longing to go <laughs> gratify my flesh with something. Um, but when he works on your heart and changes it, uh, you are a new creation uh, in Christ. And, and this is what's happened to you and I and Jody and, and all who've come under this pattern of teaching right. that he's talking about. Um, and so, Kathy, as you think about uh, the change that the gospel has made in your life, um, was there anything in specific that, you know, that really hits you about the cross? As you look at the cross, what what is it that you see that would actually set you free from overeating? Well, one thing, I like to do things physically. So I would go and kneel down and visualize the cross and my Christ on the cross. And that would make me want to 
it, yeah, it would change my heart. It would make me want to obey him. Mm. Right. Right. Exactly. It, it's where we want to, right? It, it's mm. where we desire to. It's not you telling me I have to. It's where we just, really, you loved me that much? Right. You gave up your life. You actually shed your blood to atone for all my sin. Wow. You know, and it just hits you and dawns on you and claims your allegiance, like it says here. Um, right. And so. I it really, I, I'm visualizing you doing that and thinking the difference is that now you are going to Christ and the cross to receive what food you used to run to food to get, right? So you received love and you received comfort at, um, from Christ and his death and resurrection. And now you're able to easily say no to extra food because you don't need that. You've had those heart needs met, right? Yes. Right, yeah. That's so and, and so personal. I mean, in your mind, you can see him up there. Yes. I mean, yes. I can. I can yes. see him up on the cross. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and what love, right? Right. Totally. What tremendous love. And that love is, is life changing. And that's what it says in verse 18. Do you have verse 18 there, Kathy? I do. Um, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Oh, yes. There's power. There's power in the gospel. Yes. Uh, it actually changes our what we're slaves to. The good thing about being a slave to righteousness is that we don't go back to uh, back to the slavery to sin. Uh, it it keeps us right. We it, just like you described before. So food would call your name, and you'd felt the need to just go and obey. Same with me. Now, <laughs> Christ calls my name, yeah. uh, and he, in so doing, and, and he won my allegiance, um, I become a slave, a happy captive to righteousness, which means eating in a manner that honors him, exercising when I can, and things like that. Uh, Kathy, tell us how your eating, actual eating, has changed. Well... I used to eat three meals a day and snacks in between a lot. So it was more like six meals a day. And um, then I watched the um, introduction where she talked about intermittent fasting. And my daughter had talked about that before, but it didn't seem possible that I could even do. So I prayed about, Lord, what do you want me to do? And this is in the boot camp. And I told my girlfriend, I can do anything for 30 days. I'll just do it and give it a try. So we had a, it's in March and we had a trip to Disney World with a family and I was, I was eating less, but still three meals a day. When I got back from our trip, I went on the intermittent fast where I eat breakfast at 6.30 or seven because I get up around five and then I have dinner at noon and then I don't eat the rest of the day. And I couldn't believe, I've never skipped a meal in my life, yeah. never. <laughs> and I thought, I don't know how my daughter's doing this, but anyway, I did. And so then it was only 15 days because it was halfway into the, <laughs> to the, days. the boot camp for me. And I loved it so much. I chose to go on to the course afterward and it became my, um, doing the Bible verses, which I wrote out and I'm going through again, um, because it has really changed my life as I, I, I go to God. Um, exercise, I love to exercise. It's not a problem for me. I ride my bike twice a week, many miles, maybe, you know, 40, 50 a week. Yeah. And then I swim and I, I walk with friends. So that's not a problem. I, I'm not lazy, but... I overindulged in myself big time. Yeah. You yeah. Know, somebody listening to you right now is going, I identify with you that I never skipped a meal in my life. And now I'm hearing you say 
that you eat a breakfast in the morning and then is that it for the day and no a lunch and then nothing further yeah. until the next breakfast or what right so from 1 p.m till about 7 a.m i'm not eating and right. it made sense to me that your your body needs a rest mm -hmm. and so that helped me also but then if food calls to me, then I go to the word. Then I go look to Christ mm -hmm. and um, I get help from him because I've been doing this a long time, like what, 80 days now, but still there's a little temptation every now and then. So sure. I, I know, what, know what to do because my, my Lord is so personal. Yes. Amen. He's loved you so much. And that really affects our hearts, doesn't it? And then it affects our actions. It's really beautiful how Jesus arranged the gospel for us and, and gave it to us. Yeah. But as they, as they listen to you, I'm sure they're going, I could not in any world, you know, go from lunch to breakfast. I would be hit with temptations. I would be... Um, fighting tooth and nail to stay away from the pantry and the refrigerator and the, and all these things. And so they might simply ask you, how do you do this? Well, for one thing, I was doing my lessons at night when I would normally be eating supper and God filled me up big time. It was huge. And sometimes I'd go for a walk just to get out of the house for something else to do rather than, oh dear, the pantry's calling me. But it really didn't call me so much because I was filling up on the word and my Lord. Right. Exactly right. Yes. 30 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, that's resurrection power. You know, we often talk about the cross and the power of love, but Jesus died. He rose again. He's alive. And the same power that rose him from the dead works inside of every believer. And so yeah. we have resurrection power. We have Holy Spirit power. And that overcomes our flesh, the weakness of our flesh. And, and so I, I love to hear what you're saying. It, it ministers to my heart. I know it will to many others as well. Um, if it's Just as we continue on with this, this passage, it says, um, I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increasing wickedness. So now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. I think, again, as you look at Jesus on this earth, he had offered himself up, in essence, as a servant, a slave, a bond slave, um, one who would obey the Father at all costs. And he obeyed unto death uh, for us. And he calls all of us to do the same, to say, here I am, God, I give myself to you, and I'm offering myself to you as a slave. Did you notice how it said that wickedness is ever increasing? And, and this is how people go from 10 pounds overweight to 50 pounds to 100 to 500 and so forth, because it's ever increasing. Mm. And did you experience that, by the way, as far as the um, increasing weight? No. <clears throat> no, I never well actually in december i weighed as much as i did with my first child i did i did gain weight more than i ever have before sure and, and then when i started this program um i'd already lost five pounds and then lost another um what ten more that's so good. Yeah. Great. it yes it was more more than i ever had before yeah yeah that's exactly right um 
but it, it talks about here when you were slaves to sin you were free from the control of righteousness it <laughs> says what benefit did you reap at that time i think he's being is it is the word sarcastic or yeah, what right. think it's about the sense. benefits you got uh, when you you were a slave to sin um are those things that you're now ashamed of those things result in death right um but now that you've been set free from sin and have become slaves of god the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life um and then your favorite verse i, I believe you said was verse 23 you want to read that for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And it puts it all in a nutshell. Um, sin yeah. leads to death, but God's righteousness, it's eternal life. Mm. Amen. Yeah, Jesus received the wages that we were due. I know. Um, and he, as it were, stepped in front of uh, death coming after us and and took that on himself and we get the gift he got our wages we get the gift mm -hmm. we work for wages uh, we lived in sin and worked hard for it <laughs> if you like to put it that way mm -hmm. but he gives us the gift of eternal life so at the cross he took our wages and gave us the gift of righteousness and eternal life it's it's just beautiful and powerful, um, Kathy. And so as you think about um, other people who might be listening and or watching, um, what words of encouragement would you have for them? I would say, um, ask God, because I asked him how I should eat and he gave me that plan mm -hmm. and then I chose to do my lesson every day, and that was powerful. Um, and I've prayed a lot, and I'm asking him what to do. I Well, like you said, um, the day before, we, we figure out our eating plan. You kind of know what you're going to do the next day. And um, it's worked out really well. And when I've been on vacation with family, I just would say, one, one couple, I said, we're eating dinner at noon. We really don't eat after that it freed up the hostess so she didn't have to make a meal for us oh neat i know and and she they were respectful so we went out to dinner at noon uh we were painting uh, a house we were getting ready to sell oh wow so, um god is so personal mm -hmm. if you just let him and bring him into your life mm. yeah yeah that's that's the difference between us trying our hardest, doing our best, gritting our teeth and white knuckling it. And I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that, which lasts only until the next temptation hits. The difference is that supernatural power or Holy Spirit power is what enables us to, to truly turn from uh, the overeating lifestyle and and to embrace, just to truly embrace um, self-discipline, finding comfort in the word of God, like you said, uh, kind of comforting God himself through his word. So all these are wonderful things. Um, I, I know they'll give hope to many people. Um, do you have, what are your other thoughts about when you were going through the weight loss course and what was your, what was your experience? Can you think of any experiences that you had as you went through the courses? Well, because you ask God to help you, each, day's, each day can be different. Um, you know, I'm on the airplane and I'm thinking, how do I do for the day? So I brought dinner for noon and it worked out because God, God helps you every step of the way when you let him. Mm -hmm. And more than you ever think, more than you ever think. <laughs> I've had to buy new clothes and it's been fun. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you lose that much weight. I had to take in my pants and find, find smaller jeans and um, it's been fun. <laughs> That's great. More than I thought. 
more than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, do do you ever do you ever get hangry? Um, you oh, know what I mean, mean by that? No, because I always ate all the time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How about now? No, because God is directing me now. Mm -hmm. I know this plan is from Him. There is no question in my mind. I don't have to follow a program. I follow my Lord. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. So we don't end up because I, I know a lot of people that would be watching would go, you know, man, I'm just going to be angry and I'm going to be frustrated and I'm going to be in. And, and it's hard to put into words, but you're actually the opposite mm. um, because of the Holy Spirit in you, because of the Lord leading you, mm -hmm. uh, like you just described. Um, it's remember the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace, patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. Right. Uh, these are all the fruits of the spirit. So we washed at the cross mm -hmm. and that enables us to walk by the spirit, right? To uh, be energized by the spirit of God. And, and then we war against our flesh. Um, but it seems like we're at complete peace, but yeah. that's because we're at peace with God and at war with our sin. But um, anyway, I've really appreciated talking with you. Do you have any final questions, thoughts? No, I'm just so blessed and encouraged to talk with you and to hear your testimony of how God has um, prepared you, given you this plan, equipped you and enabled you to do it. It's just been lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And I'm a little worried about when I go into the independent living place about how I'm going to eat 10 years from now, but my, my Lord's going to take care of that. Will. He will. He will. And thank, you'll have thank you. 10 years of walking with him and he will prove himself to you over and over. Right. Wow. Right. Mm. Well, do you have any final thoughts or words, Kathy, as we bring this to a close? No, Lord bless you in your ministry. Um, I really like the testimonies that you send out weekly about the different programs that are going on. It's truly God powered. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. That's good and to hear. I also like when I'm tempted or falling short, I can always run to the cross. Always yeah. run. I, I think that's where all the power is. That's that makes the difference between merely being religious, you know, and experiencing actual supernatural power. Mm -hmm. um, and and we, we know that, uh, I can't remember where it is right now, but one of the passages of scripture says that some people have a form of godliness, but deny the power. Mm -hmm. and, and so in essence, they're denying the work of the cross you know, which is uh, the gospel, the power of God and the salvation and the power of God for us who believe. And it's right. just power. Um, so I appreciate so much talking with you, Jody and I do, Kathy. And um, we thank you so much for coming on and taking your time to share with us. Thank you.